business of war. By air and on the ground, from the clouds above and the mines below, death explodes in convulsions of flame and steel. Yet war may promote compassion. Right up to the battle line, ministers of mercy are bringing new instruments unknown to civilians to save the lives and allay the suffering of our soldiers. Portable electrical generators, essential to every field hospital, are also a part of one of the most outstanding of recent devices. The United States Army X-ray Field Unit. The stretcher becomes the top of the X-ray field table. This is the first step in a revolutionary method of locating a bullet or fragment without painfully and sometimes fatally probing for it. The next step introduces the fluorescent screen on which a wounded man's entire body may be imaged. Embedded splinters or bullets will betray their shadows in the light of the X-ray. The shadow probing proceeds painlessly, adding no shock to a battle shock system and tearing no tissue in guesswork probing. And this is but one of almost countless devices which science dedicates to our wounded heroes. And there it is, a bullet deeply embedded. The next step brings in a mathematical marvel called the biplane marker. To ascertain the bullet's exact location, three centers will be fixed with their corresponding angles to the apex, the bullet. Vertically above the bullet, the biplane marker affixes an iodine spot on the flesh of the patient. Another center will determine the second of the three angles, and its calibration will also register itself on a scale in terms of centimeters. With the third center located, all equations are present, and triangulation solves the problem as easily as sums show up on an adding machine. Beside the iodine spot in vertical relation to the foreign body, a horizontal relationship must also be established so that a device similarly adjusted to the operating table will exactly duplicate the patient's posture when removed to the operating room. As in the vertical marking of iodine, the dot indicating the horizontal direction is also registered on the scale, after which the patient is ready for the surgeon. In the operating room, the charted calibrations of the biplane marker guide the surgeon's assistant in adjusting the intricate mechanism of a reorientating device. Its function is to indicate the precise position of the patient's body as it was when the biplane marker applied the iodine spots. If the posture is altered, all measurements, as well as the pointer's direction toward the bullet, will be thrown out of true. The device is now clamped into position on the operating table. It now remains only to ship the patient until the iodine spots are directly beneath the checkpoints of the indicator. This brings the pointers to bear on the embedded bullet, an unerring guide for the surgeon's infallible hands and merciful steel. With an X-ray photograph to guide him, and with the elimination of every possibility of error, the surgeon becomes the personification of science itself. And all this, proceeding not in the heart of some great metropolitan hospital, but within a stone's throw of the battle itself. Surgeons and assistants matching the doughboys for heroism under fire. Nor until peace comes will many of these devices be available to the public. Meanwhile, they are the nation's assurance to the folks at home that their boy, when hurt, gets better service today than a millionaire can command. Another unsung victory, another contribution to our soldiers, to whom Uncle Sam pledges the honor of a nation and the highest skill modern science can provide. <laughs>